All right. Thank you so much for tuning in to the 121% podcast. If this is your first time joining us, a very warm welcome. If you've listened to us or watched this before, thank you so much for coming back for another episode. Um, today I'm being joined on our panel. We have a, a, just a two-person panel. So we have the one and only... Gavin Hatcher. I'm the Chief Success Officer here at Century 21 One Blue. And the One Blue Real Estate School. <laughs> so uh, real quick, if... Uh, you know, this is our first episode with our brand new introduction. Uh, love um, I, I want to give a big shout out to the legendary, the voice of the Walt Disney World Resort, Mary Thompson Hunt, for coming in and helping us record that. So if you have been to the Walt Disney World Resort and you've heard any announcements in the park by a female in the last 20 years, that is Mary Thompson Hunt's voice. She also performed at the Comedy Warehouse on Pleasure Island for... Um, 14 years, I think it was. Mm -hmm. uh, she also has done work at the Adventures Club out there. And currently, you can hear her voice and the pre-show announcements for Happily Ever After at the Magic Kingdom. Oh, wow. So, um, mm -hmm. just a huge thank you for that. Uh, you know, it was just an honor. She volunteered. She asked, hey, would you need any voiceover work? Want me to come in? I'm like, hey, let's do this. Mm -hmm. So, she came in and recorded that. And thank you so much, Mary. We, we truly do appreciate lending your professional talents to our show. So Gavin, we talked about, um, well, before we get into our topic today, I do want to say if you're listening um, to this as we just come out with the episode, in about two episodes, maybe three, mm -hmm. we're going to be welcoming in um, a leading lender in the area. His name is Joe Torres with Mortgage Equity Partners, as well as Andrew Doyle of Seabay and Doyle. He's a, a legendary real estate attorney here in the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of questions that we've been getting from our agents in relation to the horrific events that have been happening down in South Florida with the Champlain Tower collapse. Yeah. And what can uh, us as real estate agents do to make sure that buyers that we are working with have all the information, have all the facts when purchasing a condo? Mm -hmm. Because there's some documents that are required that you know the owner provide to a buyer but then there's other documents that uh buyers should be looking at like meeting minutes and asking for reserve studies yeah straight from the condo association. right from the association yeah. so <laughs> they can make a good decision and then also what are buyers rights and what are the condo owners rights if you're a condo owner and your board isn't properly funding your reserves what are your what are your rights and how is us as real, real estate agents can we do a better job of educating our buyers and helping them make good decisions. Mm -hmm. um, I know I would be horrified if I had just sold a, a unit in that building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and they had several sales within the weeks and a couple months preceding the collapse. Yeah. So that's coming. But today's episode, yes. something that hits home to you is dual career or going at this full time. And when we mm -hmm. say dual career as a real estate agent, we're talking about whether it is part time or a full time job. You continuing to work and earning a paycheck from an employer somewhere else while also trying to build your real estate business or work your real estate business versus being a full-time agent, meaning that you, um, you haven't, uh, you're not doing anything else but real estate. So, um, so let's go ahead and dive on in. I mean, you, you know, I'm a big believer. If you can do it, go full-time, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can it be done? Dual career, yes. Are there many success stories? Dual career, yes. Mm -hmm. Is it 10 times more difficult? Yes. yes. <laughs> so that is definitely, um, you know, something that you, you need to consider. And, uh, and other part of it is, you know, what type of job is it that you're doing? Because that can also be a factor of how successful or not you are yeah. uh, with this. But again, big believer, you know, save up your money. You should be getting into real estate in an ideal, perfect world, six months minimum of bill money, mm -hmm. so you can pay your mortgage or your rent, your car payments, insurance, food, everything, Yep. on top of having money to invest in your business. You know, we see too many agents getting into this business, and we sit down with them to do a career consultation, and like, well, how much money do you have saved to do marketing? Nothing. Yep. Okay, mm -hmm. so how are you going to build your business? Right. Exactly. If you, if, you know, you're opening a business, you have to market your business. So, you know, if you don't have money, it's, it's a problem. Make sure yeah. you're joining a big, a big brand so they can help you with some brand recognition. Cause mm -hmm. otherwise if you're, you're yeah, if you're planning on going full time 
yeah. straight off the bat, no other job, nothing else, then yeah, you need to make sure you have those things in place. So we talked about in our previous episode, I think it was episode one about your history. Mm -hmm. You did dual career for about a year? Probably about a year, yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's let's talk about that for a second because you're a success story. You're one of those those unicorns of dual careers that did really really well. You you earned a full time real estate income pretty much, uh -huh. and was able to make that transition pretty quickly. So talk about the type of job you had from the day you started because it it changed the, the the commitment changed as you went along a little bit. Oh, big time! Yeah, I mean, my plan was always to. My plan, though, in, in, in the first place was always to have a full-time real estate career. That was what I was working towards. Um, you know, there are people out there that want to try and do both. Um, I was working towards that, and you can transition. Um, so a lot of the time when I'm talking to agents here and we're, you know, we're looking at new recruits, and I always say to them, hey, listen, if you've got a job, and you need that to pay the rent, you can transition, and I'm going to show you how. Um, because I did it. I was a bartender. Um, I was working day shifts and night shifts. It kind of varied. Some weeks it varied a lot because um, if you've ever been in the hospitality industry and you've worked in a restaurant, people call in sick, you have to go in and cover, all that kind of stuff. So that can really get in the way of obviously your real estate career and when you're trying to deal with your customers, especially if it's a Friday or Saturday or that it's a third day or Friday and they're getting in touch with you because they want to go and see properties at the weekend when they're off work and you need that time to be able to plan that and obviously uh, keep in touch with them. Um, so yeah, obviously uh, I was working five shifts a week. I was using um, the CRM system we have here, Boomtown. Boomtown. Um, <laughs> so uh, obviously that helped me keep in touch um, with my customers. Um, I could take a, you know, it was stressful. It was stressful to do mm -hmm. both. Uh, at the beginning, it was okay. I was building, I was slowly building my, you know, uh, my uh, customer base, uh, obviously leveraging Boomtown to help me with that, but building as much as I could. But then there came a stage when I got busy. And it, as soon as you start getting busy and you're trying to work any other job, like uh, especially in a restaurant, um, if you're dealing, if you're sat there and you've got 20 people sat at your bar and someone's emailing you and you need to get back to them straight away because, hey, they want to see a property that weekend and you need to get on your computer and arrange that um, property, mm -hmm. that can really be an obstacle. Um, you know, running out to the back room, quickly jumping on my laptop, having a quick look, <laughs> seeing what I can figure out. And it was, it was very, very stressful. Um, but it's doable. So how did you manage that stress? How did you, because, you know, <laughs> I, you know, I know you well and mm -hmm. you, you strive to defy that mediocrity to, you strive to make sure that each and every one of your customers has that extraordinary experience. So how did you manage the stress of, I got 20 people at my bar and these two buyers are emailing me wanting to go see houses? <laughs> yeah. Um, with lots of alcohol, was it a bar? <laughs> so, no, I'm kidding. Um, no, it. It manage it. My systems helped me manage it. Obviously, the support, I, the support I had from the brokerage also helped me manage it. So if there was any time that there was a piece of paperwork or, um, you know, a contract that I needed to write or an addendum or anything like that to do with any of the deals, I had my transaction manager here, which obviously helped me through the process. Um, you know, uh, John would go ahead and write the contracts for me, write the addendums, get them sent off while I was working, which was fantastic. Could you imagine doing this without that support, without mm. having a transaction manager? Wouldn't have been able to. You know, and, and, mm -hmm. and there's a difference between a traditional transaction manager that just manages a contract to close, but mm -hmm. here you have the support of someone in the office. So we, if you need that you know, contract written, we're, we're going to help you because we're invested in you. Mm -hmm. So I mean, a lot of our listeners, you know, based on the podcast results are n not just around the country, but around the world. Yep. I mean, we're actually doing really good in South Africa. So hello to all my South African friends. Um, so, but having that additional support, finding a brokerage that gives you the tools and the automation, I'm hearing was a good, good yep, plus. Definitely. Having the actual human support, having, uh, you know, yeah. ha not having to go wander around in the cloud, but being actually able to talk to someone yeah. and, and, and come mm -hmm. in and meet with them and get what you need done. Yeah. I'm or, I, or Zoom. Yeah. We, you know, we Zoomed long before Zoom was the thing, right? Well, before the, yeah, the COVID Zoom thing. As and COVID came out, everybody's like, oh, Zoom. Like, yeah, we've been doing that next. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, yeah, definitely having the human element, having someone here to do help me with that. I mean, other brokerages have transaction managers. 
they're not going to do that for you. Some bro- some brokerages have transaction managers that aren't even in the state because they're mobile. They're you know it's it's a whole just online and on the phone thing, um, which is which is fine. A transaction manager can do that for you. Um, but actually having someone to just take the reins, um, for me, just to give them a quick call and, hey, listen, I'm drowning right now. I need this help. I need this help. I need I need this contract written. I need this addendum to go out. Um, hey, can you look up this listing for me and just see when it's available to show? Mm-hmm. Um, I had all that. Right. I had the support. So that um, helped, it helped some of the stress? Oh, it helped with a lot of the stress. I mean, it took it off my plate so I could concentrate on what I was doing you know, paying the bills, <laughs> right? You know, while I was building my business, and did you have any? Did you ever lose a customer because of not being able to show houses or having to work? Uh, n- I'd like to say no. I didn't. I didn't lose any customers. I came close one. You know, not, you know, not close, not close enough that I was, you know, really, really scared of losing them. But I, in, in my head. Because obviously I want to look after the customer as much as possible. We wanted high mediocrity, give it 121%. It, I felt bad. It, it was me, you know. It, but in their eyes, uh, you know, everything was going great. Right. You know, but for me, I was like, oh, you know, I'm not giving as much as I want to give. I always use the duck analogy. You mm-hmm. know, if you see ducks swimming on the water, on the surface it looks peaceful and smooth. But underneath the water, it's a little, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, for those on podcast, we just imitated the the, the pot. The, the little the, you know, ducky legs. Yeah, the, ducky, mm-hmm. the little legs. The, the little <laughs> paw, it's not paws. What is it? Feet. 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 Yeah, we'll go yeah, feet. feet. Um, mm-hmm. Kicking things, you know, feverishly under the water. And that's a lot of what real estate is, yeah. right? Whether it's dual career or not, you you have this craziness going on, but you don't want your customer to see it. No. You know, I, even mean, I worked at Disney, right? Or, yeah. or any, in the hotel business. The back of the house. I mean, you'd have this nice, you know, nice calm music in the hallways and in the lobby, and then you go right behind in the back office, and like it's sheer hell. Like same thing at restaurants, right? Oh, same thing. Yeah, especially fine dining in the front of the house. That's peaceful music, candlelights, white linen. You go in the kitchen and cussing and screaming and yelling, and and then as soon as you step back out on the floor, it's big smile and out you go. And it is. It's an act. It's a. It's a. It's very much putting on the the customer service face and going mm-hmm. out and doing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so you were able to trans. How many sh- when you first started in real estate? How many shifts per week were you working on average? Five. Five shifts. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I was picking up more than that right, as well because I had to. So around five. Around mm-hmm. five. When were you able to start scaling that back? At what point? Now, obviously, two years, and you switched to being leadership in the mm-hmm. office. So, what point in that two year were you able to go from five shifts or more? to a more respectable took me uh, probably only around three four months something like that you know maybe three months and i started scaling back and took a shift off my plate and only did maybe four um and then i was working i at that stage in the business obviously i didn't know when the busy times were going to be and things like that so i soon learned when um was easier to do the shifts at the restaurant and when not to, so I cut out my Fridays. <laughs> right. Because I needed the Fridays to be able to obviously arrange weekend showings and, uh, you know, get with my uh, customers for the weekend. So I soon learned when the busy times were and when I needed to cut off a shift here and cut off a shift there. Um, so, yeah, eventually I went down to like three shifts um, after maybe three months and then or, or four shifts after about three months and then maybe another month I cut out another shift. And as my business grew and then I just literally – transitioned out right and eventually i just went down to one shift and working in a restaurant's fantastic as well for real real estate if you've got regulars if you've got people you know and customers you know build those relationships build the relationships oh uh, the amount of transactions i've done from people that i you know used to serve at the bar right is ridiculous yeah so it's very good it's very important to have that so, i mean outside of what we're talking about right now but it's very good to have that social aspect so even if you're a member of a church you're a member of a club or you're a member of um anything like that it's good to keep those going great for building up your um lead base and you know mm-hmm. building your customer base you know, we had one agent who an older agent had worked in the healthcare industry his entire life mm-hmm. retired came in real estate well one thing he realized and this was before we had the benefits available to our agents th- um, through the franchise um, he needed benefits. He needed health care benefits. So he went to work at Starbucks and he did the early morning shift. So the opening shift and he wanted to do drive through mm-hmm. and he used to go by Mr. Lister. So he had a Mr. Lister t-shirt and just literally had Mr. Lister and he had it done where he put the t-shirt on and put his Starbucks apron over so that so he knew where to put the Mr. Lister. So it wasn't hidden 
by, by the, the star apron, <laughs> and he worked the drive through And when it was that, he goes, I'm glad you asked. And he would hand out cards. Yeah, what's Mr. Lister? And he'd be and like, at, mm. at, glad you asked. And he would hand out his cards. And he got a lot of business mm-hmm. from working that drive through at the morning Starbucks. So, you know, we're giving you some good examples of jobs that you can do that get you out of that peak time when you're supposed to be working with it, with customers, right? So mm-hmm. early mornings, evenings, nights, those are great. If you're working weekends, you're in trouble. Yeah. That's going to be a big challenge. Uh, if you are working even Monday through Friday and you're in a position or a job where you don't have the flexibility or freedom to be able to answer phone calls. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have one agent who he, he still does work full time. They're trying to pay some debt off. He's actually starting to really starting to kind of find that rhythm now. And he's doing some good production numbers. Um, but he's a he's on the road all the time. He's yeah. never he's doing some a, great numbers, right? But he's right. never in the mm-hmm. office uh, or in an office. He's always mobile in his car. Mm-hmm. You know, it's 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 outside sales, so he's able to pull over, take a phone call, do whatever he needs to do mm-hmm. on that company time, which I don't encourage, right? And it's yeah. probably not the most great, but hey, it works. So there's that balance. If you're sitting in an office Monday through Friday, nine to five, eight to five, whatever, mm-hmm. and you don't have that ability to open up your phone, set up an e-alert or, or, you know, put them on a drip campaign or whatever, that's going to be a problem. Yeah. That's going to be a challenge. It's going to not necessarily, you know, stop your growth, but it's going to be something that's going to inhibit your growth. It's going to make it a lot slower. Yeah. A lot slower because if you, I mean, obviously you want to build, build, build. Um, And if you are one of the people that wants to transition into real estate and you're not thinking dual career, um, then yeah, you want that time. You want to be able to grow. Yeah. I will say if you do not ever, and I mean ever quit your job, this is my personal opinion, right? And I know there's a, there's a major franchise out there that tells their agents otherwise, and I could not disagree. I think it's reckless, yeah, reckless advice. Mm-hmm. Do not quit your job. If you do not have at a minimum six months of bill money mm-hmm. and marketing money to build your business in the banks, so that if you don't get a sale, you're not you're getting desperate and getting scared and wondering what you're going to do. Yeah, uh, that's a that, that, that's the worst advice anyone could ever get. Get in, start working full time, find out you know maybe join a team, figure out what you need to do to be able to start working something and get get a couple of deals under your belt so that you can work and grow. But don't quit your freaking job. No, um, mm-hmm. would not recommend that. I did that. It was scary, and mm-hmm. thankfully, I, I I did okay my first couple months in the business. With so, your friend Amex, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but I wouldn't recommend you know do as I say, don't do as I do. Yeah, it, it mm-hmm. was it was reckless what I did, and it well, was. And you, now you're giving advice from hindsight, though. This is yeah. this is great. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So been there, done that. Um, and I I had a job as we talked about in the last episode that I hated so much. That one day I got in a car accident on the way to work, spun the car three or four times, deployed all the airbags, broken axle, like it was bad. And the first thought is the cops pulling me out of the car, trying to get me out in case the car catches fire. Airbag dust is still everywhere. Was thank God I don't have to go to work. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I would rather crash my car. Well, I, didn't, I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I didn't. I wouldn't rather do it. But since it had happened, my, my first thought, and that was with the moment. For me, that I said, I'm beyond miserable. I know I hated my, I hated mm-hmm. my boss. I loved my job. I loved the company. Yeah. But I had a boss, the worst imp- boss I've ever had in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just knew I needed to make a change. And so that's when I decided to take the real estate class and finally take that step. And it was a way, and I was so miserable, I, I didn't care what happened. That's <laughs> I crazy. was in such a bad spot of, of, going to work. I was getting sick to my stomach. I, I wasn't, it just wasn't a great environment. So, mm-hmm. you know, you got to, you have to evaluate your own personal situation and figure out what you're going to do. Um, if you're going to do dual career, what type of job do you have? And, and sit mm-hmm. down with your broker and, and have a conversation with them. You know, let's talk about, you know, talk about the job you have, how they can help you make that transition as a broker. That's my job. Mm-hmm. My job is if I'm going to work uh, affiliate with you and welcome you into our Ohana and to our family, then I need to help you come up with an action plan and the steps that you need to take to go from where you are today to where you want to be. 
And if we have the resources and the ability to help you do that, then, and you like us, we're a match. If we don't have the resources, I'm going to tell you. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't help you achieve that because of the current job. If you're working Monday through Friday and you're in an office and you can't take calls, you're going to have a problem because a lot of leads actually do come in during the day. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, so you're not going to accept those leads. So you got to figure out a different way. You're going to have to really rely on your sphere, for example. So let's talk about your sphere. How long have you lived in Orlando or your hometown where you're at now? You know, what, you know, what type of network do you have? Your case is also unique because you had not, I mean, if you haven't guessed from his accent, folks, he's <laughs> not from Orlando. He's not from the central Florida market. So you had lived in Orlando how long before you got your license? Um, let me think. Maybe seven years, eight years. So, but maybe seven? No, maybe six or seven years. Right. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like you've been in this market no. forever and mm -hmm. ever. Actually, I thought it was less than them. Yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. It was about six or seven years. I was working up in Winter Park at a couple of bars up there, and then moved down to the bodega. Down to the bodega. The bodega. Um, right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you you got to look. You didn't. But did you have a large sphere? Here? No, I didn't know anybody. So I knew no one. That, why does that not surprise me? Yeah, well, <laughs> just joking. Well, just the, joking. Wi the wife used to live here, right? Um, years and years ago, because she danced for Orlando Ballet Company, and I didn't know that. You didn't know that? Yeah, know. yeah. She yeah. used to dance for Orlando Ballet Company, and that's why she used to live here. And uh, when we got married, and we'd lived in Chicago for a year and seen the winter up there, we went, yeah, let's moving, moving to Orlando. Let's hit Orlando where it's sunny. Yeah. <laughs> You know, and, that's, and that's another thing, too. You know, I, I have no experience to relate to this, but if you're up north, my understanding is that showings typically go down when that, what do they call that stuff? It's white and it builds up on the ground. Kind of fluffy. Yeah, fl cold. Uh, snow, snow. Oh, that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so that can kind of slow down. See, I haven't around seen here, that for years. <laughs> around here, we, we don't have to worry about that, right? Mm -hmm. If it gets down to the 50s, we're like going, oh, get the oh yeah. coats out. I've got boots. my hoodie and a jacket on yeah. at that point. <laughs> so we're weak down here when it comes to weather. So you just got to figure out, right, what type of job will work. And maybe mm -hmm. it means I'm going to make a change. Maybe I do have a, a, a Monday through Friday office job. Mm -hmm. But to be able to achieve my dream of real estate and be able to provide that financial independence for my family or, you know, whatever your why is, I'm going to make a change and go, become a bartender. If mm -hmm. I have some bar, maybe back in the day I bartended yeah. or I'm going to go work at Starbucks because mm -hmm. I know I can pick up the morning because no one wants the morning shift. Yeah. So go open at Starbucks or close it, you know, so something you can, flexible, right? Mm -hmm. more flexible that you can ask for time off. Um, so that way you can make it work so you can still keep an income coming in mm -hmm. as well as build your, your new income. Yeah. So there's all kinds of, you know, options and opportunities that you can do there. Uh, what other thoughts do you have on this topic? Um, well, as in, with the full time thing, I'm not sure how I personally. I'm not sure how I would have done it if I'd have been full full time um, in any other job. Well, no, there's a lot of jobs out there, part time jobs, you know, restaurant work and things like that that you can get into. Um, the Depending on where you live, like Orlando. Yeah, I mean, it's Orlando, Orlando, you're you're good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we get we, we have a lot of tourists that come here. Uh huh. You're good. There's a lot of restaurants. There's a lot of a uh, lot of options. Lot of you can even work. suck as a server if you go down to the tourist area. You don't have to worry about the repeat customer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, when a park, kinda, you you had to worry about that, yeah. right? But yeah, go to the tourist area and it's just mm, churn churn churn. Yeah. So um yeah I I mean honestly for me if I wanted to have a successful real estate career then I wouldn't be going for a dual career. It's it's just something that, it's doable, don't get me wrong, it's doable. Um, but you need to have a plan. But you need to have, and you need to have systems in place, you need to have a plan, you need to have the technology, you need to have the support and backup. Yep. Um, without that, not a chance. I mean, especially go to the technology. Of course, we're big proponents of Boom Down. Um, they don't sponsor us. Um, Greer, just to be wondering. Mm -hmm. um, but no, uh, so this isn't sponsored by Boom Town, but... They are, you know, one of the top two in the business. And mm -hmm. the one that I think rivals them, you have to have a minimum of $50,000 spend with that company to even be thinking about. It's called MoxieWorks. Mm -hmm. um, but Boomtown is, is a system where, yeah, if even while you are working, the system can, you can set it up using and leveraging the automation that comes with the system you can have a lead comes in. It's going to send them a text that appears to come from you. Mm -hmm. It's going to send them a email. welcome email. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. You know, it asks them a quick couple questions. Uh, so it, it's actually starting to do the work for you. Uh, and there's a lot of stuff. It's just going to, you know, if it's a text or an email, 
it's going to send it for you. The only thing you have to yeah. do is actually call a couple times, right? It's going to engage with them at the beginning. So that way it kind of gives you a little bit of breathing space mm-hmm. to then be able to uh, contact them. Right. And know? then if they start looking at houses, depending on if you're running advertising or like here, we do a lot of remarketing advertising for our agents as a whole. Mm-hmm. So if they start looking at houses, well, now instantly while you're working, it's going to start showing them ads on, on Google and on Facebook and Instagram and their Facebook Messenger. It's going to start showing them um, houses that they like or, mm-hmm. you know, appeal to them. So it it just really helps take a lot of that manual burden on. Like we talked about last episode, when I got in the business, it was 100% manual. Yeah, uh, I didn't have mm-hmm. all this automation. If I did, whoo. Yeah. I just think about what I could have done. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in, in this with this system or having a system, there's not many systems that do everything that Boomtown does. And I don't think there's any system that does it nearly as well as Boomtown does. Uh, One of the big popular ones is follow up boss, but you can't do any drip text in that one. It's an initial high text and then you're done. I've used that. Mm -hmm. um, It's, it's, it's very simple. It's very affordable, but it's not robust enough. Mm -hmm. The only other one out there that's, you know, on the feature list is even comparative to, Boomtown is KV Core, and we were a customer, and um, it has its challenges. And it, you know, having used KV Core and having used Boomtown, to me, in a, a reliability and a functionality and a feature, it's Boomtown every day, all day, without a question. Yeah. Over KV Core, so that's why we've been with them now. You know, we actually just posted yesterday. We've been with them three uh, three years. Five months, something like that. And mm-hmm. from the leads that we have actually leveraged the Boomtown platform, not counting our sphere, not mm-hmm. counting leads that agents put in themselves or direct leads, but through the advertising. So we did form a partnership with with Boomtown for some advertising. We just closed fifty million dollars mm-hmm. in closed business, and it was like over was it one one point three million, million, million in commissions, commissions paid to our agents mm-hmm. because of Boomtown. If you're doing a dual career. You need this type of a system in order to be able to grow. If you don't, you're screwed. Lead comes in, even if it goes directly to your site, they come in at, at 1 p.m. and you can't respond until 6 p.m. They've already moved on. Mm-hmm. They've already called another agent. Yeah, they've already sat there. They've pressed a button on another website and they've already got another agent. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So that's a challenge, right? And with this system, they get that instant response so that way you don't have to worry about a lead feeling neglected. Yeah, it's interacting with them before you can physically interact with them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So really important, starts them off on the drip campaign, gets them looking at houses on the website, or if it's a home value, it gets them a, a preliminary value report. Mm-hmm. It looks like it's done by you, but it's not. It's automatic, and then you can go in and do the re- refining ones later. So you're going to need that if you're going to do a dual career. So the moral of our story today, I think, is... Dual career is not ideal, no. but depending on the job you have, can work. Yeah, maybe make some changes. Maybe do a different job, mm-hmm. save up some money, and do something that's not paying maybe as much, but mm-hmm. it's okay. This will get you by for maybe buys you six months to a year. I think it all depends on what you want to get out of your real estate career. Yeah, you I know mean, well, how, how successful do you want to be? How how much money do you want to make? How many you know? Well, I mean, we're operating the premise that you're wanting to be full time. You're wanting to yeah your other job with this. Mm-hmm. Pot. I mean, if, if exactly. you're just getting your license to close a random deal here or there with your friends and family, then this, this conversation mm-hmm. doesn't appeal to you because we're talking about transitioning. Exactly. Um, mm-hmm. in, in this case, you know, they're not going to want to transition. So in this, in the, in the context of this conversation, it's truly maybe make those changes. If you can save and, and go full time, that's better. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say, Hey, delay your start in real estate until you've saved six to eight months of bill money and then start? No, that's no, not go necessary. Get, go ahead and get started. Mm-hmm. Dual career it. Yep. At least you're gaining some knowledge and experience mm-hmm. and still try to bank some money over the next you know, few months till you get that cushion. And once you have that cushion in your savings, mm-hmm. that's the time that you can then quit oh. the job and move on. It's totally doable. You're just going to have to hustle for a while. Yep. That's it. I, I love the quote from, from Mike Ferry. You know, real estate is simple. But it's not easy, mm-hmm. meaning you have to do the work. And, you know, if you're working a full-time job and you come home exhausted from work, guess what? Now it's time to start work on the second job yeah. of building a real estate business. The difference is, and where I hear from agents a lot is, 
they get this second wind of energy at that point because all day they've been working to line someone else's pockets. Mm-hmm. Now they're working hard to help people find home, to help people with the American dream. You know, there's nothing more sacred in American society is, is home ownership, right? It's the most coveted thing you can have. So you're helping with that while providing your own family with financial stability, financial security. Mm-hmm. Um, so you have this renewed energy because now you're not doing it for some other schmuck. You're working <laughs> for you. Yeah. Right. And, and in real estate, your income is based on your hustle. Oh, big not, time. not on what you know, Mm-mm. not on your brain. It's on your hustle. Yeah. Cause I know some really smart people that don't make money cause they're not willing to hustle. Mm-hmm. I know some people that aren't the smartest people in the world. They're great people. They're not like, I'm not, not trying to insult anyone, but they're not yep. Harvard grads and all mm-hmm. that. They make, I don't have a college degree, mm-hmm. high school diploma people. Uh huh. And I'm doing okay. Yep. I would say. Yeah, I think um, uh, it's going to help you having a customer service background as well. If you're good with people. Or sales. Or sales. Sales, customer service, anything like that. Definitely going to help you, um, obviously. Anything you, is, you had to build relationships with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because we're, we're not selling houses. I, I, I disagree with it. And I'll, get, I'll get a lot of hate for this. Mm-hmm. I get it every time I say it. We're not selling the house. The seller is. We're not buying houses. The buyer is. We are the relationship builder. Our mm-hmm. job is to get to know someone, get them to open up so we can understand what their needs are. Not just what they tell us our needs are. We talked about this yesterday. Yep. But digging deep, going three deep on every question to find out what their true needs are and then matching that buyer or that house, matching two together. We're matchmakers. Uh-huh. And you have to have that relationship to be able to do it. Yep, definitely. So lots of fun. So any other thoughts? No, I think we covered a, a good bit of it there without just regurgitating what we were just saying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, so, let's so for those, for those yeah. listening and watching, this was a last minute change. Our, our, our scheduled uh, topic today, our guest uh, on the way here, uh, vehicle caught on fire. So Actually caught on like fire. Like literally, not yeah. just like. He gave us a call when they were putting it out. Yeah, fire department <laughs> was there, fire trucks, all that good fun stuff. And we're like, oops. Uh-huh. Okay, so, well, that's a good excuse. So we moved this up a week. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't, yeah, I forgot I had a doctor's appointment. No, it was my car's on fire. I was on the way and then smoke <laughs> started coming from my hood. So uh, when Joe joins us in a couple of weeks, we'll, we got it rescheduled. But it's actually going to work out better because then we'll have the attorney on. It's going yeah. to be a good one. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that's pretty much all I think I have. So, yeah. you know, thank you so much for listening or watching. I hope you found some value. And if you're you're looking to get into real estate and you're just not sure what you should do, I hope, you know, you can pull some nuggets from what we've shared today. You can always reach out if you want to talk to us. You know, you can send an email to us. We'll put all the contact details in the description below. Yeah, find out how we did it. Yeah, find mm-hmm. out how we did it. Mm-hmm. It works. It can work. You got to mm-hmm. you got to hustle. So. No matter what you do every day, go out there, be extraordinary, give it 121%, and above all, make sure you're defying mediocrity. Thank you so much for listening and for watching.